Number 10, Planula. This item is a bit of a stinker. It's not nearly as smelly as some of the items higher on the list, but it's definitely not an item you want in most of your runs. This item heals you for a flat 15 HP every time you take damage, which sounds decent, and in the early game it is. However, actually getting this item in the early game is incredibly hard due to it being the grandparent boss item, an enemy that only spawns on Sky Meadow. This means you'll have to wait until at least stage five to get this item in most cases. Otherwise, you'll have to get it from a recycler or yellow printer, and assuming you do find a yellow printer with this item, you don't have much reason to grab it since basically every other yellow, with one exception, outclasses it. 15 HP is basically the same amount of damage reduction you'd get from 3 repulsion armor. Now, this item is at 10 because it has a really, really cool synergy, which I'll come back to in a second, but first I want to talk about the number 9 spot. Aegis. It's no secret I hate this item. I ranked it as the very worst red in my red ranking video a few months back. What it does, or I should say what it's supposed to do, is allow you to heal past full with a mechanic called Barrier. Sounds good on paper, but there's a few reasons this doesn't really work. For one, unlike normal health, Barrier drains over time, so building it up is incredibly difficult because you constantly have to fight that Barrier decay. To put it in perspective, 5 Lungus is barely enough to sustain Barrier. And that's in Monsoon. If you do it in Eclipse, it's even worse. Second reason this item is suck is it's outclassed by a white item. Topaz Brooch also gives you Barrier, but instead of from healing, it's on kill. And because of this, Topaz doesn't really have to fight against Barrier Decay. 4 or 5 Topaz will essentially double your health bar, something Aegis can only do with an extreme amount of healing items, items that would be better invested in damage or mobility. If Topaz was never added, Aegis would be a much better item, but as it is now, it has a hard time coexisting with it. Now the reason this isn't higher on the list is because of a very specific item combination that breaks the game. What you need to do this is Aegis, Planula, Voids flame and hellfire tincture for the equipment. If done correctly, activating the tincture should turn you into a supernova of death. This works because void scent flame procs when you attack an enemy at full health, but hellfire tincture allows you to attack yourself, and thus proc void scent on yourself. Planula allows you to get extra healing from hellfire, and Aegis takes advantage of that, putting you above full health. All that in combination, it allows you to proc void scent on every tick. Now this is not the most practical thing in the world, for one, it requires a pretty good computer if you want to use it effectively. The items it requires are also pretty rare, and it can be ruined by getting too many damage items. Two crowbars is enough to cancel out all of the barrier you get from Aegis, with watches and focus crystals also jeopardizing it. But if you can pull it off, it's still pretty baller. That's the sole reason I didn't rank these two items higher, although they probably deserve it. At number 8, it's gotta be Leeching Seed, one of the most overhyped items in the game. This item heals you for 1 HP every time you hit an enemy. whoop de fucking do First of all, this just isn't that feasible on half the roster. Loader, Artificer, Acrid, Bandit, and Railgunner are burst survivors that have low fire rates with high damage. Leeching Seed isn't proportional to damage, it's proportional to the amount of times you hit an enemy. Additionally, the healing is multiplied by the ability's proc coefficient. For example, Huntress's Flurry has a proc coefficient of 0.7, so a 3 round volley would only give you 2.1 HP in Monsoon, and in Eclipse, that's half to 1.05 HP. Not good, especially since this is a flat amount of healing and does not scale as you level up. This is by far one of the worst healing options. Even on survivors like Commando that have a high fire rate and a high proc coefficient, it's only okay. If you want on-hit healing, you're better off going with the Harvester Scythe. To get this item to work, you only need one, and from there, you just need to invest in crit, which is something you should already be doing anyway. But in order to get Leeching Seed to work, you have to get stacks on stacks of it. Number 7, Bison Steak, or as I like to call it, White Scrap. Probably not a big surprise, all this item does is give you 25 more HP. It doesn't scale, it doesn't increase regen, it's just 25 more HP, and that's it. Raising your HP isn't all that necessary when you have items that let you take less damage on every hit and avoid damage entirely. Now this item being bad isn't really a shock. Imagine this scenario in real life. You're walking along in a park, you find a random chest that's been sitting there for god knows how long. You open it and find a rancid piece of meat, but then in your infinite wisdom, you try to do battle with it. Like what do you expect man? Fun fact, this item used to be entirely different before the anniversary update. The item was called Fresh Meat and it increased health regen for a couple seconds after killing an enemy. They also flipped the item's icon when they changed it to Bison Steak. Again, this item is not the best. It's hard to hate though because it's only a white item. Finding a bad common isn't nearly as devastating as finding a bad rare. And number six, Defense Nucleus Col Colo Colo Colloquially no, that's a hard word. Colloquially known as Count Duclius. This item spawns Shungite every time you kill an enemy with a maximum of four Shungite. Now, here's the problem with Shungite. They may protect you from the 5G frequencies, but they ain't gonna protect you from an elder Lemurian running at you like it's about to shit its pants. These things just really aren't that good. 
I guess they do distract the enemies a little bit, but they're not very accurate, so it's hard for them to draw aggro. It's the only new boss item we got with the DLC, and unfortunately, it's probably the worst one. This item is just a big nothing burger. At least Planula does something for you. Not much, but it can be useful sometimes. I'm not sure I can say the same for Count Duclius, though. And number five, Nukahana's Opinion. Fire haunting skulls on healing, and I know I'm gonna get some pushback for putting this item here, but I'm sorry, it sucks. It sucks, it's so bad. Granted, I'm used to Eclipse, but even in Monsoon, this item is horrible. Horrible. The amount of healing you need to fire a single skull is ridiculous. This is what it looks like with 5 Weeping Fungus in Monsoon. Pretty underwhelming, right? And not only does it have a low fire rate, but the damage isn't there either. This item deals damage equivalent to 25% of your maximum health, which isn't very good since enemy health values scale much faster than your own. And on top of that, this item has a proc coefficient of 0.2. 0.2, that's it. That's a 2% chance to proc an ATG. Now, the common statement I hear is it's good if you get Nukahana with Engineer and Dabungus. You get to Engineer with Dabungus, man, you're gonna have a great time. Now, that is the best use case for it, assuming you're using the stationary turrets. It does provide a little bit of extra damage, but one issue it has with the turrets is range. You basically have to put the turret right in the enemy's stink zone for Nukahana to actually activate. Sure, it's a cool synergy if you get it, but it's not gonna carry your run like a lot of people seem to think it will. The fact that it's a red item is why it's here. If it were a green, I wouldn't complain as much, but as it is now, I would rather see pretty much any other red item. Number four, Leptin Daisy. Often called Slept On Daisy, but it's not slept on because it's genuinely one of the worst items in the game, and anybody calling that is unfortunately a liar and a fraud, and I hope they get divorced. Come on over here. Come on over here. No, you flipped me off. Come on, Sour. No, no, no. Come on. You're not an intellectual. You're a fake and a fraud. This item creates a healing nova during the teleporter event. Now, while the description says periodically, what this actually means is one time. This item works one time per stage, and that's it. Stacking this item will give you one more whoopty fucking do. Can it save you? Absolutely. Will it save you? Probably not. This has got to be the most situational item in the game. Not only do you need to be in the teleporter to use this item, but you also need to be on low health at the exact right time. If you have not met every single one of those conditions, this item is just going to be a waste. If you didn't know, this item is actually predictable. One stack will always activate when the telly is at 50% charge, with two stacks happening at 33% and 66% and so on. Even with that knowledge though, it's probably not going to help you out that much, since you usually don't plan out the exact point you're going to be at low health. It's just a rotten item, plain and simple. Number three, Hunter's Harpoon. Hunter, come on man, leave my son out of this. No Joe, it's, it's just an item man, calm down. Oh, all right, man. You should have said that from the beginning. Yeah. We're starting to move out of the useless item category and into the items that will be an active detriment to your run. Hunter's Harpoon gives you a speed boost every time you kill an enemy. There's a couple reasons this is bad. For one, it's unreliable. Relying on killing enemies to get away from other enemies is a recipe for disaster. The inconsistency can really throw you off and sometimes feels like you're lagging. If you're in a spot where you're trying to dodge, I've had countless situations where the speed boost from Harpoon has put me in an unfavorable position, not to mention the added risk of falling off the map, especially on Sky Meadow. If you're close to the ledge and you get a speed boost at the wrong time, it can mean taking some fall damage. And if you're in Eclipse, it can mean instant death. It probably won't, but does it matter? Do you really want Hunter's Harpoon? the item that probably won't kill you, but still might. The best use for this item is with Soulbound and Forgive Me Please. It's pretty decent here since you'll be getting enough on kill effects to proc it constantly, but otherwise I'd scrap it. Number two, Singularity Band or Void Band. As much as it pains me to say, Void Band is the second worst item in the game, where most void items are straight up upgrades or have roughly equal trade-off, Void Band stands out as the sole item that is a significant downgrade from its non-void counterpart. To understand why this item is so bad, let's look at what makes the non-void counterpart so good. Kajaro and Runald Bands are some of the strongest and most consistent items in the game. Kajaro multiplies the attack that procced it by three times, creating a firestorm, damaging anything that comes in contact with it. Ice Band is similar with a 2.5 damage multiplier, but instead of being applied over time, it's applied instantly, allowing it to be used with crowbars and focus crystals. Both these items proc at the same time and share the same 10 second cooldown. They also stack incredibly well, with each additional stack being just as useful as the previous. So what does Void Band do? Well, it turns the normal bands into poopy caca. Granted, the effect looks really cool. It's a black hole that sucks everything in. The problem here is it doesn't deal any damage. You go from a 2.5 multiplier and a 3 times multiplier to a 1 time multiplier, or no multiplier at all. Additional stacks do increase this, but not nearly as much as they would with a regular band. Now you'd assume this item would have a shorter cooldown to compensate for this, right? 
Well, no, it actually has a longer cooldown from 10 seconds to 20 seconds. So not only are you losing two thirds of your damage, but you can also only use it half as much. It does have a large area of effect, but I take the smaller, higher damage area of effect from Kaijaro any day. But that's okay because it does have a proc coefficient, so you can proc a weak ass ATG off your weak ass void ban. Let's fucking go, baby. But yeah, this item really only hurts you. On paper, the effect isn't horrible, but since it's at the cost of two of the best items in the game, it's almost never worth it. And the number one worst item in the game has to be Stone Flux Pauldron. This item doubles your health, but halves your speed, and it should be immediately clear why this item is where it is. But to provide a little bit of an explanation, mobility is the most important thing in this game. That's especially true for Eclipse, but it applies to Monsoon as well. Being able to dodge enemies and navigate the battlefield is so unbelievably important. The health boost from this item is nice, but it will also result in taking far more damage comparatively. This item just cripples you, and far worse than that, it's not even fun to use. This item is for two types of people, masochists and those that like to roleplay as an old man. If you're the type of guy that likes to make up stories about your grandkids and talk about your weak knees, this item is for you. But just because you walk like an old man doesn't mean you get the 60 and over discount at the Golden Corral. No, sir. You know what they do to people they catch faking their age at the Golden Corral? They beat the shit out of them. They'll beat you to a bloody pulp right behind the mac and cheese counter while your whole family is watching. They will. They really will. And it gets worse because they will then proceed to take all of your mangled viscera and entrails and use it in their signature hash browns. They do it to millions of Americans every year. Please tell your kids, your grandkids, your priests, your rabbis, your ministers that the Golden Corral does not give a single fuck about you unless you're over 60. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. It's the only way I can pay my medical bills after a totally unrelated incident at the Golden Corral. As always, these lists are just for fun. I enjoy complaining about these items, but any list like this is inherently flawed. Items in this game are always going to be situational. No two runs are the same, so a good item in one run may be a bad item in another. Just take this video with a grain of salt when applying it to your own runs. If you like this video, you'd probably enjoy my video on the top 10 underrated items. Ta-ta for now.